Well, God bless you, and we certainly want to thank you for tuning in to another uh, virtual service online. Uh, I said it before, and I'll say it again. This certainly is something that we are readjusting to, but we know that um, all things are working together for good to them who are called according to his purpose. And uh, this uh, uh, environment and this atmosphere has the opportunity to reach so many more people. And um, yet and still, we thank God for our very own of the Israelite church. We certainly miss seeing you and greeting you and hugging you and uh, just being in the presence of one another person to person. But it's not time yet for that to happen again. So here we are. And I thank you for, for being a part of this and another Sunday service that the Lord has allowed us to be in this session in. And we thank God for each of you. So as we proceed in this service, uh, um, we're going to have a word of prayer. And I pray that you would eliminate any distractions that may be in your environment and um, prepare for um, this atmosphere of worship. So, Father, we thank you for being so good to us. You are worthy of all our praise and glory. And we thank you for an opportunity to um, just come together and worship, even in this atmosphere. And where two or three are gathered together, even calling on your name in this virtual atmosphere, we know that you're in our midst. And because you are in our midst, uh, we bow to your will and we uh, submit ourselves to um, you having your way and you orchestrating uh, the furtherance of this service. And we thank you for touching the hearts and minds of your people and those who are seeing this from afar and those who are close by. We thank you for uh, speaking to our hearts and we thank you for uh, your touch and your encouragement. We pray for those who are shut in Lord, even with sickness and disease, and we pray for those who are um, in need of help, Lord. Only you can provide, but you have put those resources in our hands, and we thank you for being uh, the hands and the feet that will share your ministry um, to a dying world. And we thank you even right now for um, this opportunity and this service for you to be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. At this time, we're going to have our opening scripture reading. God bless you. This is a reading from Psalms 95, 8 through 11. Harden not your heart, as in the provocation, and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that do err in their heart, and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Amen. So uh, we know that this is um, the month of May, and this is the typical time that we would uh, give shout-outs to um, our graduates, and we would like to do that at this time. We're going to just take a moment and celebrate uh, the graduates um, from the Israelite Church of God in Christ. So here we are. Earlier this year, I walked the halls of my high school for the last time. I went to my last college lecture. I saw some of my classmates and teachers for, for the, the very, very last, last time. time and I didn't even know it. I had so many expectations of what was to come. Senior breakfast, prom. That feeling when you finish the last exam. Being the first person in my family. To get handed a college diploma. Walking across the stage. All eyes on me. Good luck hugs. And final waves goodbye. It's supposed to be my time. My time. My time. My time. A celebration of hard journeys and sweet victories. Proof that I didn't quit. But in a blink of an eye, Everything changed. And despite celebrations lost, victories not received, honors not given, I'm, I'm taking, taking something, something with me. And not something taught in class, but something taught in life. I can do all things. All things. Through all things. I can do all things through Christ. Who gives me strength. 
but it's not just about me. There's still some people I have to thank. Because no one crosses the finish line alone. I want to thank my parents for believing in me no matter what. And reminding me every day that I can do anything I set my mind to. For praying for me every day and pushing me. I want to thank my coach for convincing me that I can do anything. I want to thank my professors for helping prepare me for God's plan for my life. It's for helping me stay confident. You helped me stand strong even when I didn't think I could. I want to thank my choir and drama teachers for showing me how to use my talents in a way that honors God. I want to thank my parents for helping me fulfill my dreams. And told me the truth, even when I didn't want to hear it. I want to thank all of my teachers for going above and beyond to help me succeed. Showed me how to embrace creative thinking. Hopeful living. I want to thank my small group leaders. You pointed me toward God. So I will stand in his strength. I'll step out with grace over grief. With courage over fear. I will love God. I will love others. And I will make my mark in this world. I'll make my mark in this world. And I will make my mark in this world. I, I, I am, am a graduate. graduate. Hello, my name is Rachel Hill. I will be graduating top 10% of my class at Harrison High School. Some of my biggest accomplishments I have done during my high school career is take AP honors classes and even college classes, graduating from the AVA program and being part of the National Honor Society. Um, being involved in my church on the media team and even gave 95 hours to the Memorial Children's Hospital. After high school, I want to go to the University of Denver to study marketing and international business and even try to study abroad my junior year and pursue an MBA after my bachelor's degree. Thank you for all your prayers and Look out for me for what I plan to do. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Randall Days. Um, I graduated from Whitefoot High School, and some of my accomplishments are I graduated with a 3.7 GPA, um, I graduated among the top 3% of my class, I was a member of Student Cabinet. And then some of my basketball accomplishments are, uh, I recently joined the 1,000 Point Club, finishing my high school season with 1,179 points. Uh, I was a basketball captain. Uh, I finished as a McDonald's All-American, and I won the 4A Player of the Year. And then my, my plans for college, um, I plan on pursuing a career in basketball, but if that doesn't work, I will plan on pursuing a career in business management. But I'm still undecided about college yet. Everyone will know. Thank you. I would like to introduce you to Sydney Barnett. She will be graduating from Mitchell High School. Her accomplishments include a high school cheerleader, working, and of course, her graduation. Sydney plans on working with children with special needs after she graduates from high school. We celebrate Sydney Barnett. God bless you as a light. Elder Michael Jones graduated from Denver Seminary August 31st, 2019 with a master's degree in biblical and theological studies. Thank you for your prayers and support from 2016 through 2019. After I retire from the federal government, I plan on using this working with our seniors in Israelite church furthering the ministry. God bless you and we love you.
Hello, my name is Felicia Trinace Johnson. I am a graduate. I graduated with my bachelor's degree in biblical studies at Liberty University in Lynchburg, Virginia. My plans were, well, actually, it took me a while to go to school because first, I'm a mother of five children and my husband was a military soldier. So we traveled quite far and it wasn't conceivable to really go to school at that time. So I went later and I decided to take biblical studies because I love the Bible. And I also have been a Bible Sunday school teacher and Bible, um, Bible study teacher for children. And so it was something that seemed to be easier and came natural to me. But I also, I love teaching. I love teaching. And so I decided that I would love to teach one day in a biblical school. Haven't figured that one out yet. But right now I am an education assistant. And so uh, the biblical studies, I like, the reason why I chose the school because it showed a um, a biblical worldview based upon all the core things that you take. And I really love that. That just really excited me. Uh, my future is that I will become a teacher. I'm not really sure if I want to be in a traditional classroom where I am right now or online. But I do want to be able to teach it my way and as well as the, for the children to still get the core things but from a biblical worldview. And that's it. Good day, Is Your Life family. My name is Joseph Johnson. I just graduated from Grand Canyon University from Phoenix, Arizona, February of this year. One of the things, or a few of the things that really touched me about this was, uh, first off, uh, it was 30 years in the making to be able to get a degree, because I started at uh, age 18. You can kind of do the simple math there. Um, but I really enjoyed the last class that I had, which was Action Research Project. It taught me a lot about learning, a lot about myself, um, active learning, um, and how it contributes to um, just education as a whole for elementary students. Um, very, very interesting uh, how you can uh, make sure you not one size fit all for an education, but you understand differences in visual as well as audio and the many different types of learning styles that are out there. Um, <clears throat> what I planned on doing with my degree is furthering my um, career in uh, teaching and also obtaining a master's, either master's of education or a MAT. Amen. And so we thank God for um, each of our graduates who have done a stellar job, and we're just thankful for each one of them. And at this time, we are going to have our announcements by Sister Michelle Wills Hill. Well, God bless you, Israelite family. We are in the month of May, and we are transitioning to our summertime. We are just so thankful that the Lord has preserved us for such a time of, as this. Um, the word of the month for May is pray, coming from Luke 18 and one, where it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought to always to pray and not to faint. We want to um, remind you that we have a prayer list that um, people transition in and off of. We're so thankful for all the healings that have transpired, but we always want to remember that there are those who are still sick and shut in and those who are still in the hospital. Always remember to continue to pray one for another. Your announcements for this week and this month, just keep in mind that we are continuing in the vein of a virtual church with video conferencing options um, Sunday mornings beginning at 1130 a.m. and also followed up on Wednesday night with uh, Bible study. Dynamic Bible teaching, dynamic preaching continues on. So we are so thankful to be in such an age of information where we can still continue to fellowship. The uh, 
special announcements that we have. Uh, we want to remind everyone that we do have sources available made readily for you if you want to continue on to view any of our sermons that we have had. Um, once again, reach out to the iKojic app where you will not only find links to the YouTube videos, but also the um, sermons are posted. Um, also, we want to remind you that there is um, sermons that are being broadcast weekly. Uh, in Colorado Springs, it is gonna be on Comcast Channel 6, and in Pueblo, Comcast Channel 385, uh, antenna 51.1 and at Fort Carson channel 88. So we are just so blessed and highly favored that we uh, still can go back and uh, review those sermons. And then special announcements. I just wanted to remind you that it is a very precarious time and people are desperately in need. We know that people have lost their jobs, their sources of income, um, but we do have resources through the church made available, and that is through the Open Hands Pantry Ministry. So if you so need those desired services, we want to remind you to make contact with Sister Terrell Harding in the community. There is another outreach ministry called Good News Pantry, they are located at 125 North Parkside Drive in Colorado Springs. Once again, that's located at East Corner of Parkside and Bijou. Um, that endeavor actually occurs on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10.30 or 10 o'clock a.m. to 1.30 p.m. And if you want to participate in that, um, you would ask to be there no later than 1 p.m. I just wanted to remind you that you have a miracle in your mouth, that you can have what you say. And in the words of our beloved pastor, expect a miracle because we believe in miracles. God bless you. God bless you. And we certainly want to thank you for uh, joining us for another virtual service online. And we are delighted to be able to share the word of God with you um, in days and times like these it becomes quite evident that we need uh, the word of God um, hiding in our heart that we might not sin against God. And certainly this is why um, he has given us his word. And uh, so we're thankful for each of you that are here with us. And um, certainly if you are watching by television or listening by radio, uh, we are glad to have you as well. I want to... Um, bring your attention to a few verses of scripture that we shared earlier in the year. Um, and the first one is coming from Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 13th verse. And it's talking about those who um, under the old covenant and the, and the old Testament who walked by faith, but um, they didn't necessarily receive um, the promise, but they saw it afar off. And um, I guess I'll go ahead and read that verse, Hebrews 11 and 13. It says, these all died in faith. Now, there's something to be said about that. Um, all of us should die in faith. Amen. There's, uh, there's something... Um, there that pertains to all of us. They died in faith. And um, certainly this is not a, a funeral message, but this is to say uh, that um, on the last day of that you would live on earth, um, you should die in faith. Amen. And so it says these all died in faith and and they did not receive the promise, but they saw it afar off. And so if, if nothing else in, in this season that we're in, you should begin to see something afar off. Amen. By faith. You should begin to see something afar off. 
by now something should be uh, stirring in you after uh, this time of stillness and um, quietness before the Lord and um, not having all the distractions that we have. You, you should begin to see something afar off. And so it was for all of these in the Hall of Fame or Hall of Faith. But it says three things about them. And I shared this at the beginning of the year. It says they were persuaded of them. Uh-huh. They embraced them. And then they confessed. And I want to bring that back to you because it's certainly something that we need to walk in in today's time. We, number one, need to be persuaded of the promises of God. Then we need to embrace the promises of God. And then we need to confess. And certainly this isn't um, the subject for today, but it's, it's, uh, it leads into what I want to go on or talk about. Being persuaded and then embracing and then confessing. And if, 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 if we pers are, are persuaded of something, then we have to hold on to it. And in Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter, and the fourth verse, it says, You that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. And it's important to know that when we come out of this and we are expecting to come out of this, those who um, have clinged unto the Lord will have victory like no other. And we already have the victory, but to see its manifestation, this is why they said in, in this verse, you that did cleave or cling unto the Lord are alive. See, some people don't take this seriously, so they just, oh, I'll get to that when I get to it. But, but in the days and times that we're living in, you, you, have to, you have to take this seriously, and you have to cling unto the Lord. You have to cleave unto him. That means you have to hold on tightly. And not let it go. So, so in the in 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 Hebrews eleven chapter and the thirteenth verse, they were persuaded, and then they embraced, and then they confessed. And so, the verse that we're going to to um, really focus on today is coming from Habakkuk the third chapter, in the sixteenth verse. Now, Habakkuk means to embrace. I believe I shared this with you before. The, his name means to embrace. And, and, and why that's important to note is that, that in this season that we're in, as it was for the time that he was living in, there, were, there was um, such um, disobedience and disarray in the land and because of that the captivity the persecution of the people and so Habakkuk had m many questions before God you know and, and, and asking God how long will this be how long will we have to endure this how long will we have to put up with this same question that's going on today how long that's, that's, that's where he was coming from and this is even in, in, in Psalms, the 13th chapter, Psalms 13 and 1 says, How long will thou forget me, O Lord? Forever? That's what he said. How long will you forget me? And then he says, Forever? How long will you, you hide your face from me? How long shall I take counsel in my soul? having sorrow in my heart daily. And without question, we are 
amongst people who have sorrow in their heart daily. But I won't read all the verses, but the last verse in, 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 in that book says, I have trusted in thy mercy. Oh, my goodness. And that's certainly where we are. Where we have put our trust, or we should have put our trust in the Lord's mercy. And my heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. So he says, I will sing unto the Lord because you have dealt bountifully with me. Amen. So from that verse and from the verses in Habakkuk that we'll read, um, I want to speak to you about still I rejoice. So Psalms 13 and 6, it says, I will sing unto the Lord. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation because you have dealt bountifully with me. Amen. So still I rejoice. Now let's go to Habakkuk, the third chapter of the 17th verse. It says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vine. The labor of the olive shall fail and the fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. But he says, like it says in Psalms 13, he says, yet I will rejoice. Why? I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. And he says, the Lord God he is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet. And he will make me to walk upon mine hind places. This was given to the chief singer on the stringed instruments. We've been talking uh, for some uh, uh, a few Sundays now about um, remembering and rejoicing. And I want to uh, add to that as we sing unto the Lord and as we rejoice in the God of our salvation, as we remember Zion, as we, as we recall his word, we must continually be persuaded of it. And if we ever needed that persuasion now, we need it. We must be persuaded of it, we must embrace it, and we must confess it. Let's not forget that principle. In Hebrews 11 and 13. So we must be persuaded of it. Then we must embrace it. And then we must confess it. And, and, and it was necessary in the season that uh, these verses was written in Habakkuk. He needed to embrace and cling unto the word. He needed to embrace and cling unto God. He needed to embrace. He needed to see something afar off. And, and, and we need that. We, we need that hope in our heart today, that anchor that keeps us grounded and steeled in, in his presence. We need that in our heart today. You need it. I need it. Lord knows the world needs it. This is why uh, in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, it says that the, the grass withereth mm -hmm. and the flower fadeth. But the word of our God shall stand forever. Everything that you're looking at is going to fade away. Everything that, that you put your trust in is going to go away. That's why it says in 1 John, the second chapter and the 15th verse, love not the world, neither the things in the world. It says if any man love the world, the, the love of the Father is not in him. And, and then it just says that all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh. That's all that was going on in Habakkuk today. That's why there was so much uh, disobedience in the land. 
the lust of the flesh, uh-huh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So it goes on to say in 1 John, the second chapter in the 17th verse, it says that the world is going to pass away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So in our verses here in Habakkuk, the third chapter, he begins with the fig tree. But he ends with livestock. And notice how he builds his case. He, he uses something as uh, maybe insignificant as the fig tree. So we in our life, we often subconsciously convince ourselves that things will get better. Even though the reality of this world's um, scenarios that it's getting worse, not better. And so while he, he begins with the fig tree and ends with the livestock, uh, it kind of represents our life. You know, we can see our life in these few verses. How is that possible? Because if we start with the fig tree, it's something that we don't really think much about. We don't pay much attention to the fig tree when it's no longer fruitful. Why is that the case? Because, you know, the fig tree was considered a delicacy. So there, there, there are things that there are comforts in our life that when they're taken away or they're done away with for whatever reason, we don't really think about it much. Because it hasn't really yet uh, caused a hardship in our life. And so he begins with the fig tree. And, and certainly in, 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 in our case, there's certain things that, that seem to be taken away. But no one paid it no mind. And then he moves from the fig tree and he goes to the fruit on the vine. He says, although the fig tree shall not blossom, so, yeah, we're okay. It's just like a child that uh, needs to be disciplined. And you say, well, go to your room. And they're like, fine, I'll go to my room. They, of course, they don't have the nerve to say that, but they'll, they'll, they'll mutter it to themselves because it hasn't really, really caused any hardship on them. But the more that is taken away, then it begins to get our attention. And this is, this is what we see progressing in our daily lives. Yeah, because, because people aren't paying attention. They're, they're not really paying attention. The, 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 the more than 80,000 deaths that have occurred in the last two to three months hasn't really gotten the attention that it needs to. Oh yeah. So, so, so what's got to happen? Something else has got to get our attention because this is not working yet. So all the fig, although the fig tree shall not blossom, then he says, neither shall fruit be in the vine. So now I don't have the fig tree blossoming. But now there's no grape on the vine. Okay, so now I don't have that and now I don't have this. This is how Rebecca is building his case. He's saying, look, you don't have this and you don't have that. Has God gotten our attention yet? Neither shall but there be fruit on the vine. So they, they don't have the grapes and they don't have the figs. But, you know, we still seem to be okay. But then he adds to that, the labor of the olive shall fail. And the fields shall yield no meat. So now this is starting to compound. 
not only has there been a pestilence, but now there's also a famine. So not only is, is people's health and lives at risk, but our sustenance is at risk as well. They're, they're, they're beginning to announce the shortages that will be in the stores and they're, they're rationing things that we never thought they would ration. We're standing in line for things we never thought we would need to stand in line for. So it's compounding. Things are adding up. They're, it's becoming worse and worse. So the labor of the olive shall fail and the, and the field shall yield no meat. And then he says the flock shall be cut off from the fold. And there shall be no herd in the stalls. So now we're really wondering where our next meal is going to come from. We're, we're really wondering how we're going to last another month. We're really trying to figure out how this is going to work. And, and so Habakkuk living in this season, being in this condition, he needed something to sustain him. And as he did, so do you and I. And the only constant in each of our lives is the Lord Jesus Christ. So he says, he says, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Listen, the scripture says in, in Psalms 118 and 8, it says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in princes. And I read this verse on uh, the other night uh, in Bible study that, you know, the Lord is on your side. So you have no reason to fear. You have no reason to give in. You have no reason to be in despair because the Lord is on your side. And certainly we need that comfort. Certainly we need that consolation. Certainly we need that confidence. We need to be persuaded of it that the Lord is on my side and I will not fear. I won't fear what man can do to me. For I look unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. I'm his child and I'm I'm his own and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I'm his own and he will never leave me or forsake me. And because of that, I rejoice. I rejoice in the midst of the chaos. I rejoice in the midst of the struggle. I rejoice because the Lord alone is worthy to be praised. So, so in Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, it says that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord shall men live. Listen, there is going to come a time when every Sunday school lesson, every devotion, every prayer that you prayed, every Bible study, every uh, message and sermon that you heard and listened to, everything, you're going to need every word. Every word. It wouldn't have said it if we didn't need every word. Yeah, see, when, when you were, when you were in, in, in college and in class, and if you missed a class, then you had to get the notes from someone who attended class on the day or night that you missed. You know why? Because whatever you were tested on included the times that you weren't there. Oh, I hope you all hear me. I hope you're understanding the fact that the things that you have ignored 
you're still going to be required to learn. Oh, yeah, the things that you've overlooked, the times that you said, I don't need that, the times that you said, I won't be going, the times you said, I, I, I won't be praying, the times you said, I won't be studying. You're going to need every word of God. And after you, you, you have heard it, you're going to have to cling to it. And this was Habakkuk's experience as it is ours. You're going to have to embrace it and, and don't let it go. Hold on to it tightly. Because everything that you've depended on is going to fail. Except God. Everything in this world is going to fail. And so you say, I've heard that before. Yes, but you need to be reminded of it once and again. So it says, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And David was encouraged in Psalms 37 and 25 by saying, I have been young. And now I'm old. And I have not seen the righteous forsaken. And I say unto you in the words of David, God will not forsake the righteous. His ears open unto their cry. And he will be with us in the day of trouble. And he will shield us. He will protect us, keep us, cover us defend us and bless us so he says i i have been young and now i'm old yet have i not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread this is why we sing um, the song who wouldn't serve a god like this Oh, yeah, you have to be encouraged in the season that we're in. I don't care how bad it may be. I don't care how uh, 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 dependent we may find ourselves. Listen, who wouldn't serve a God like this? So Habakkuk ends uh, these verses by saying, the Lord God is my strength. And he will make my feet like hinds feet and he will make me to walk upon my high places no this is not the time to sit down by the river of babylon oh we're gonna go through this we're gonna make it through not only we're gonna survive we're gonna thrive we're going to excel we're gonna achieve and we're gonna be blessed beyond measure so, so my hope is in the word and, and I rejoice in the God of my salvation. And while Habakkuk couldn't uh, get an answer to his question of how long, just like you and I cannot get an answer to this question of how long, one thing we can do in the meantime is rejoice. Rejoice. One thing that we can do is, is lift our voice and say, Lord, I thank you. One of the things that we can do in, in the meantime is just praise God for who he is. One of the things that we can do is just lift our hands and say, there is none like you. No one else deserves this praise like you do. So, so when, we, when we praise God and, and when we rejoice in him, oh, it changes our circumstances. It changes us in the midst of our circumstances. 
And I'm going to end with this verse in, in Romans, the eighth chapter in the 35th verse. Who shall separate us? Who? Elder Rap said who? Not what, but who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Notice what it said. Notice what it said. From the love of Christ. See, we're attached to too many things that's taking us away from the love of Christ. So, so he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long and we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter but he says nay why don't you say with me nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us here it is again he says i am persuaded i'm persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Height or depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Listen, you, you, you have to still rejoice. You have to continue rejoicing in the Lord. You have to let the high praises be in your mouth and, and a two-edged sword in your hand. You have to be confident in this season that God is going to bring you through. And not only you, your sons and daughters, your brothers and sisters. Because it's the faith of the righteous. It's the prayers of the righteous. It's the remnant, the seed that God has left remaining that is, is, is keeping us in this hour and this day. Amen. So still, I rejoice. Father, we thank you for your word. You've put it in our hearts. And we hide it that we might not sin against you. And we thank you even now that you would bless every hearer. Those who are viewing, encourage the hearts, the hung down head. Those who feel like they can't go on any longer. But still we rejoice in your word and we give you praise and we give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. So we started this at the beginning of the year and uh, we certainly endeavor to keep it up. And uh, we just want to um, acknowledge our birthdays. And for the month of May, uh, we have Jonathan Ross. Eminence Dunn, Michelle Gibbons, Brandon Rhodes, John Seabury III, Joseph Johnson Jr., Brother Oliver, Buddy Oliver, Priscilla Wims, and Jasmine Seabury. Certainly it's a blessing to uh, see another birthday and we say to all of our May birthdays happy birthday and certainly by now we pray that you have received um, something special in the mail. God bless you for our May birthdays. Amen. So it's offering time. As you know the routine by now you can use our mobile app and that's iKojic Connect that is available on Android or through your Apple device, or you can give from our website, that's israelitekojic.org, and click the donate button. And of course, you can always send your check or money order in the mail to our PO Box 5011 Colorado Springs, Colorado 80931. Whatever you have purposed in your heart to give unto the Lord um, is appreciated, and we thank you for your faithfulness to this ministry. 
Amen. God bless you. So as we close out another uh, virtual service online, I want to encourage you to uh, cling unto the Lord, stay before him. And um, when you do so, you'll be amazed at the uh, doors that he'll open, the blessings that um, will be in store for you. And so we thank God for another opportunity. And as we close out, I say to you, may the Lord watch uh, between you and me while we are absent one from another until we meet again in this virtual atmosphere on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. Be blessed. And remember in the words of our pastor, you have a miracle in your mouth. God bless you.